If you can get 100% on exam 2, then you get one of this. You can do it. Good luck. And just to make this super super fun, maybe not for the students, but rather for myself, I'm going to add an extra multiple choice question to my Calc 1 Calc 2 test so that the total is going to be 104 points for my Calc 1 test and 105 points for my Calc 2 test. They have to get exactly 100 points in order to get a gift card. <laughs> so for my Calc 1 class, I have one student who got 100% and a student is going to get a $20 gift card to Cheesecake Factory. So congratulations, you know who you are. Great job. And then for my Cal2 class, I have two students who got 100%. And uh, of course, they're also going to get the gift card as well. So great job. Yeah. Let's see a few examples first. So suppose today you are like, you know, study really hard and you get 100 points on the test. But you know what? If this is the curve, once we take the square root, well, you get 10 and you multiply by 10, you still get 100 points. So here, you don't really gain anything. But you should not complain because you have 100 points already, right? However, if you take a look, if somebody gets 81, then in that case, well, once we take the square root, we get 9, and multiply by 10, we get 90. Hey, look, right here, <laughs> wow, we gain 9 points. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good deal. I will take that, right? And now, what if somebody scores 64 points? Well, Take the square root of that and multiply by 10, we get 80. Have a look. This right here, how many points are we getting? We have gained 16 points. Wow, this is even better, right? Because of course, plus 16 is better than plus 9. Hmm, so the question is, now of course, I'm not recommending you guys to, to score, to aim for that score, right? The question is, what score shall we aim for so that we can possibly gain the most amount of extra credit? And by the look of this right now, it seems like the lower the score that we have, the more points that the teacher will help us to get, right? But that's not true. Because let's take a look at the extreme example. And that is if we score zero. Well, take a square root of zero, <laughs> you still get zero, and you multiply by 10, guess what? You still get zero. So in this case, you, uh, you didn't, you know, gain any points under this policy. Zero times anything is always zero, right? Except for infinity, but that's a different story. So the, <laughs> let's write down the question right here, right? The question is, <laughs> I'm just going to write this down like this. What is the best deal? And in fact, this right here can turn into a calculus question. But of course, I know some of you guys would like to think about this on your own. I also encourage you guys to do so. So please pause the video now and think about this first. You done? Okay, cool. So let's take a look at the solution. This is actually, I'm going to make it into a calculus one question. So how can we do it? Well, keep in mind that this right here is the new score. And the new score will be bigger than or equal to the original score. So if we just do subtraction, this minus that, and then we just have to find the maximum, and that will answer the question. So the solution or the approach is just that we want the maximum, and let's define the function f of x to be that, which is just 10 times the square root of x, and then minus the original. We want to find the maximum of this function. Calculus 1, min max question. And this right here is like how you can use calculus in real life. Yeah, for your exam scores. But anyway, how do we find the maximum? Well, first we need to get the derivative and then we set equal to zero so we can find the critical numbers and then we test out if the critical number will give us min, min, minimum or maximum. So here we go. Let's get the derivative and that will just be f prime of x. 10 is 10, it's just a multiple, so I'm going to write that down. And then the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x. And then the derivative of minus x is just minus 1. 
So that's what we have. And of course, we can simplify this real quick. So we get 5 times 1 over square root of x. Let me just write it as 5 over square root of x minus 1. That's the derivative. And now let's just go ahead and set this equal to 0. And we can just see this right here. Let's just look at this and then solve it. x has to be what? 25. And now we just have to make sure that it will give us a maximum. So let's do the first derivative test. Meaning we look at the number line for like a sign chart for f prime. So let's go ahead and put down 25. And to do the first derivative test, we pick a number less than 25. And let's use 16 because it's easier. If we put 16 here, we'll get 4 on the bottom. 5 over 4 is 1.25. And then minus 1, it's positive. That's all you have to know. So this part will be positive. And if we pick a number bigger than 25, that's say 36. And then you will end up with negative. So as you can see, the derivative changes from positive to negative when x is at 25. So it guarantees that we will have a maximum. And the reason is because this tells us the function goes from increasing to decreasing. That's why we have a maximum. <laughs> so the answer for this question is in, <laughs> it's just 25. And again, I'm not encouraging you guys to aim for this score if your teacher is actually going to do this kind of curve. But yeah, it's a very interesting <laughs> um, calculus question in my opinion. And yeah, so thank you so much for telling me, <laughs> for sharing this idea here. But let's just confirm that it is actually going to give us the, it is actually the best deal, right? So let's see, if we have 25, take the square root, we get 5, and then multiply by 10, we get 50. And guess what? This right here, yeah, it's an additional 25 points, 25 free points. So that's so good, huh? Well, if we scored a little bit higher, I don't want to use 26 because the square root of 26 is not nice. So I will use 36. Okay. Square root of 36 is 6. Multiply by 10 is 60. Have a look. From 36 to 60, we get uh, just plus 24. But if you see, if we have 16 here, square root of 16 is 4 times 10 is 40. So guess what? From here to here, it's just plus 24. So indeed, 25 will give us the maximum additional points. So I would say that would be the best deal.